by Riverside. And just like that, we're back. This is the 4th and 1 podcast live from Lidditz in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Anchor.fm slash 4th and 1. Find us anywhere. You have the podcast. Insta- you get your podcast. Instagram at 4th and 1 podcast clips on YouTube. And so, so much more. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's the time you've all been waiting for. Well, half of the country, a quarter of the country, eh, a third of the country. I don't know. I it's, would say half. I, I would say actually the North actually is hardcore Big Ten country. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that's fair. I mean, you can maybe get over into like Idaho and Washington where they might not be. But like, I think from there, it's it's pretty it's pretty consistently Big Ten. Um. And that's what we're doing today. If you haven't been able to put two and two and two together to get four, it's I Big have a Ten. Game. It's Big Ten preview week. Yes, what's your game? I, I have a game. So, well, well first of all, uh, not CFP insider Roberto. Sources are telling him Pac-12 is nearing a new TV deal, which is huge news for the conference. Uh, it's going to be multiple streaming services, so live TV kind of up in the air for them so that's going to be very interesting if they get a new tv deal and it mimics what the big 12 gets i think the pac 12 is around for a lot longer than people originally thought including myself let's get into the game a little bit so man i'm going to give you four teams Mm -hmm. and i'm going to describe these four teams and i want you to tell me not who these four teams are but which team you would consider to be the best out of these four teams. Okay. Okay. All right. So we got Team A. Mm-hmm. Team A has an A plus coach. Okay. okay. You get that's the letter grade. An A plus coach. Okay. They have a brand new QB. This is for the upcoming season. They do have an elite tight end. They have an A defense, and they have brand new wide receivers and brand new running backs. Okay. Okay. Team B. They have an A-10, A-minus coach. They return their quarterback. They return their running back. They have an A defense. And they their, their wide receivers and position groups are B-plus to A-minus. Okay? Mm-hmm. Team C has an A-plus coach. They return their QB, but they have brand new running backs, brand new wide receivers, at least to the program. And they're... Defense is a B. Team D has an A to an A-plus coach, depending on the day. New quarterback, elite wide receivers, returning running back, and a B-plus defense. Out of those teams, who would you consider is the best? Okay, well, here's the issue. Are the brand-new quarterbacks, because you had like one or two with the brand-new quarterbacks, are they transfers or are they... The brain. Well, then it's Team A. It's Team A with a new quarterback. Oh wait, I thought you said he wasn't a new quarterback on Team A. No, Team A has a new quarterback. Team what? B and C have returning QBs. Then it's Team B. Team B. Ladies and gentlemen, TB, Team B is the Michigan Wolverines. Oh, I didn't try that. For- I know you didn't try that, and I and I tried to do it so that you wouldn't try that. Uh, go follow us on Instagram at Fourth One Podcast as Admiral. You like that said? Listen, <laughs> I didn't even introduce us. On paper, I am uh, Captain Boring. He's Admiral. You like that? On paper, Michigan is the best team in the country. Yeah, I don't see how people get around that. I understand that Georgia's the favorite and the SEC schools are the favorite, but on paper, they're the only top dog. The other teams are Team A's Georgia, Team C's UC, USC, and Team D is Ohio State. I don't see how people can look at the roster and be like, Michigan's not the best team in the country. Now, I don't want Michigan talked about a whole lot, and that's what I'm doing. But I just want people to know that if Michigan's sitting there at the end of the season 13-0 and and they've just railroaded everyone, that I was number one on the bandwagon first of Michigan's the best team in the country. However, if they fall flat on their face against East Carolina, 
in week one at home, just like they did in 2007, I will take all the blame and fault for that. Okay, hold up. 2007 was a much different Two thousand No, 2007, it was the exact same situation. They had an A-minus to an A coach in Lloyd Carr. The returning quarterback was Chad Henney. The returning running back was Mike Hart. Their defense was an A-level defense. And their wide receiver tight end talent pool was B plus to an A minus it's the same thing they would they just came off a shockingly good year into where they only played Ohio State within three points now this year they've beaten Ohio State twice they are the favorites in the Big Ten how can you how like it, it, there, the similarities are so similar and I know that that was contra you know whatever yeah you said the same thing twice I said the same thing twice whatever you call that Saying the same thing twice, that's what I call it. Uh, you, you call it saying the same thing twice. Anyway, do you, do you have any comment on that? Because I've been talking now for like five minutes. Yeah, well, that's because I've been, you know, doing my other job because yeah. I failed to prep almost every single week as this is the worst podcast in the world. Listen, we're going to get into it, and I'm glad because we're starting off with Michigan, and it, we're a little bit biased, which everybody knows at this point who watches this. This is what happens. But also, this is a different coach, and it's a different team. Now, Michigan, hold up. Um, oh, that's right. I forgot they fired Matt Weiss. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, they, I fired got, Matt, they fired I got, Matt Weiss, but it's the same offensive coordinator. It's the same guy calling plays. Yeah. They only had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight transfers in. I have no idea how. Like... The culture, <laughs> the culture is pretty good. Um, that's a quote from somebody who the culture was not good at. Um, like, <laughs> the culture is pretty good. This is a different team, but also you can always, for lack, sorry, mom, you can always shit the bet. Oh yeah, for sure. And like, it, it, and it's a very Michigan thing to do to shake the But history bed. is not necessarily cyclical. History is more of a mirror. It is what you make of it, and it, but it always looks very similar. The question is, can you can you get out of that? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Can you get out of that cycle or that reflection of yourself and become new? I mean, I'm looking at at, at teams like Rutgers is a great example. They're probably not going to do it. But uh, Purdue, new coaching at Purdue this year. Um, Nebraska's trying to do something. Wisconsin's like Wisconsin's a great example of the same exact thing happening at Michigan. I guess the point I'm trying to make is they're the presumptive favorites. Anything can happen, and it's just like Captain Boring to be boring and say, uh, "But what if they lose?" Because it's a very Michigan thing to do. That's all I've known Michigan. The moment it's a very I really everything st- thing to- 2007 was the first moment I'm just I went all in and I end of 2006 I watched the Ohio State game and then I watched the USC game and I was like Ohio State that was awesome Michigan so close and then I watched USC and they barely lost to USC oh that was so great then they come back and everyone's like they're gonna crush Appalachian State who was an FCS school at the time right. And they, not even FCS. They called it Division Division 1 AA at that time. So they didn't, right. they didn't even have the playoff at that time. And and just return. Ch- I mean, Chad Henney, uh, uh, Mario Manningham, Mike Hart, all returning. And they just... Bah, that was my first experience with Michigan football. And it scarred me. You know, trauma creates trauma. Jim Harbaugh, loaded, both sides of the bar. Uh, I told you returning quarterback, J.J. McCarthy, one-two punch. They're not returning one running back. They're returning two. They Blake got Corm, very lucky. Yeah. All pro, Donovan and, Edwards. And I'm going to stop you here. This generation, which to be fair, it's my generation that these kids are, just looks, is hungry differently. Right? You look at all the YouTube stars out there, and they're, yeah. the, the, the kids, the people, the dudes, the men who are hungry are hungry. And you get out of their way because they're going to run you over. And they don't care, especially Georgia, because they'll go speeding by you. But <laughs> especially these guys, because they'll just run you over and it doesn't matter. And you need to get out of their way. There's not really, for lack of a better term, any sympathy there. You know, asterisks on that. But, like, that's where we are. That's who they are. It's a much 
different, very, very much different uh, mentality than 2007s and the millennials. I, I, I would definitely hope so. I mean, it, all the talk is being one of the best te- talking about being one of the best teams in the country. It, really, when it comes down to, if Michigan's trying to beat, Michigan has to look at every week and be like, it. We our main goal is East Carolina. Our main goal is UNLV. Our main goal is Bowling Green. Our main goal is Rutgers or whoever's next on the schedule, etc. Right. It can't look ahead and I feel like Michigan football always looked ahead to Ohio State and it always tripped him up early on now I feel like the culture is there for Michigan football to where it is a next game up mentality next person uh, next team now, now you might be practicing and doing drills for Ohio State and Georgia as they put a beat Georgia banner up and they have an Ohio State cut. That's fine, but their main goal focus is um, three of those transfer, three of those eight transfers that you mentioned about Simeon. They're all along the offensive line. They had three mm-hmm. returning starters. They got two big time starters in from Arizona State and Stanford. Both started twenty plus games. Concerns on defense is small. The big concern I have with the defense is the secondary. Uh, we lost DJ Turner. We have Will Johnson, but who's going to be opposite of him? My big faith in Will Johnson is he's a he's very much a prototypical corner to where if things aren't going well, he's going to play really bad. He, he's either going to play really bad or really good, and there's no real in between. Um, and then linemen, our nose tackle, Mason Graham's going to be fantastic. Simeon, here's what I'm going to do, because I'm biased. Mm-hmm. Everyone yeah. knows this. I, yeah. I, I love me some Michigan. Uh, but what we're going to do this week is we're going to flip the script. Okay. And you're going to pick winners. Okay. For so, everybody? For the uh, Big Ten? I, I think so. I think we're going to do it this way. I, I like this, because um, I have in mind basically what mine would be. But uh, I have the schedule pulled up here. All right, so are you ready or no? Uh, I am. I'm also sharing with you my spreadsheet as we speak because technology is the thing. All right, week one is Coastal Carolina. I know that's my that's your job now, but you know I okay, have to do well, it anyway. Well, you're wrong right off the bat. So I'm week sorry, one, Eastern Carolina. It's l- the same thing. E. Uh, week one is e- where did you share that document? me you just got an email from me saying that i shared the document with you i just got an email so now i have to keep track or you have to keep track no i'll do i'll try to do both okay you give me the things because i i'm supposed to put them in the just give me the things okay 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 east carolina week one yeah at home yeah okay that's a win the first four games are a win okay so that's east carolina unlv bowling green rutgers all at home yes and are any of the are any of those games within twenty three points? Uh, let's assume one of them is. I'm going to assume it's going to be Rutgers, who's going to either get their crap together or not. We'll okay. see here in a second. All right, great. I, uh, first big road test at Nebraska. New I, Nebraska's got new coach and everything. Is that? That's not Luke Fickle. No, that was who, who um, went to Nebraska. Purdue's coach went to Nebraska. No, no. Um, the old Baylor coach. Oh, his name escapes me. The old you know, Baylor coach. He coached in. Uh, he coached Carolina. There it is. It is Matt Rule. Matt Rule. I knew it began with an R. I, I like that. It's not going to be. He's he's known for his first season turnarounds and then taking things off a cliff. I don't think it's going to be that much of a first season turnaround. So Nebraska is going to be a W. Okay. And then they're at Minnesota. That is a rivalry game. That is a protected rivalry game moving forward in the schedule. You should tell them the fun facts that you learned about the little brown jug. Oh, my goodness. Because someone got you a nice birthday gift. Uh, so you got me a great birthday gift, an encyclopedia, ESPN encyclopedia. I have – I mean, the other day I was like, I wonder why this is. I flipped right to it, and I found it. Dude, my memory so shot. Uh, the little brown jug. So Michigan created the little brown jug. Uh, who who was the coach at the time? Uh, it was Fielding it, Yost, right? Yes, yes. Fielding Yost created the little brown jug because he was afraid that Michigan was going to drink contaminated water and, and being fed contaminated water. So they went up there, they beat Minnesota, then they forgot the jug, and Fielding Yost wanted it back. And the Minnesota athletic director said, "Absolutely not." 
if you want to come get it, you're going to have to, if, if you want it, you're going to kind of have to take it for us by winning. And so they did. They went back two years later and they beat them. It is, from what we can tell, and our internet searches, right, Simeon? It's the same jug from 1902-03. Yeah. And it, uh, so, did Fielding Yost really care? Probably not, but it's a good folklore, so we're going to stick with the story between Minnesota and Michigan. It's, it's a, it, it, a five-gallon jug. It's a five-gallon jug. If it's not the original one from 1902, it's at least from the 1920s. Yeah, so it's 100 years old, minimum. Yeah. A minimum, but it is like a physical original trophy, and they painted it and decorated it, and it's a whole thing, and you can go read on it. There are plenty of really cool articles out there. Um, that's a W. Okay, so Minnesota at Minnesota. PJ Fleck's going to probably be on the hot seat by the end okay. of the year. All right. I, ooh, hot takes. Indiana. A win. Uh, Michigan State. By a million. A by a million. They are favored that by- Or everybody's going to get thrown out of the game, and they're going to play against the B squad and, be, and lose. Uh, they are currently 26-point favorites, 20-point favorites. That's favorites. going to be a dangerous game because that's up in East Lansing. Yep. 100%. And p- some kids are going to want to throw punches. That's just the way that it is. Per don't. Uh, per do, we win. Okay. Penn State. Okay. At so Penn State. Here, here's the deal. It's at Penn State. It's in Happy Valley. It's yep. Week 11 is at Maryland. Okay. Yep. That's a win. My question is, are they going to lose to at Penn State or are they going to lose at home to Ohio State? That is my question. I think <laughs> I have right now on the spreadsheet, if you had it pulled up, it's green. I have them going 12-0. and 0. Okay. Because I think that's how good they are and I think that's the momentum they have. I think especially because we haven't heard anything else, even though I didn't like the way it looked, about the the – oh, my gosh, what is his name? Matt Weiss thing, yeah, it was it was decisive. It was quiet, and they promoted a dude immediately on and, literally and, ten days after. And they hired a dude from Old Dominion who's had great success over at Old Dominion. They brought in more people. He was the he's now the linebacker coach. It's everybody's it's everybody's third year besides Jesse Minter and Steve click 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 click. click, click. Scale. Okay, yeah. Um, it's their second season. I, if they're going to drop one of them, it's probably going to be that week ele- week 10 Penn State game. Um, I have that. I won't be watching that game with you. I'll be That will be an in-law game, um, most likely, so we can rub it in my dirty, dirty in-law's face. Boo, Penn State. I, I have them going 12-0. and 0. I'm and, just going to be positive. And, if, uh, and that's fine. And and I'm good with that because of what I brought up. Michigan should go 12-0. and 0. And their two toughest games, as you said, or three toughest games, should be at Michigan State, at Penn State, and home against Ohio State. And I think that they drop if they drop one, as long as they beat as long as Ohio State's undefeated and they beat them at the end of the year, I think again they could be looking at Big Ten Championship game, winning that, and two another two big teams in the Big Ten. Simeon. What team are we doing next? It's going down just like we did last week. We liked it so much. Um, we are doing top to bottom winners to losers of last year's. So that means we're going to Ohio State. The Ohio State Buckeye. I oh, can't believe I just did that. I hate myself. You said the Ohio State. I, I hate it. I hate myself so much. They reload a powerful, or they must reload a powerful offense. They replaced C.J. Stroud and three offensive linemen that went off to the NFL. However, they still have Marvin Harrison Jr. and Ameka Abuka, uh, who has one of the best names in all of college football. Ryan Day has given up play calling. Simeon, are you paying attention? I am, yeah. Ryan Day has given up play calling to Brian Hartline, the wide receiver's coach. Um... The, their running backs are Tra- Travion Henderson and Myron Williams. Myron Williams was a power back last year, and I think he's going to get a bulk of the carries because I was not impressed with Travion Henderson. Uh, the offensive line is a work in progress. Kyle McCord is a front runner to replace Stroud, and he threw to Marvin Harrison Jr. in high school. You still paying attention? Oh, I was one. That was my next question after okay. you were done with the breakdown. They reloading offense. 
they're hoping to lean more on a defense. Jim Knowles had a great first year, except in the big games. Jim Knowles a very much Don Brown, Michigan-esque, where it's man defense, and I'm just going to beat you. Right, I'm going to blitz you a lot, and I'm going to beat you. That got him into trouble in the first half against Mi- Michigan last year. They got That got them into trouble against Georgia late in the game. And so uh, they don't have a ton of glaring concerns. They did get some portal production, but we're going to have to see how Ohio State goes. So they do have a graduate transfer from Oregon State. That is the, – the question is quarterback for me, right? They've had mm-hmm. this – uh, Everybody thinks, well, you should be thinking of. You can go find this. It's like 2018, where it's JT Barrett. I'm forgetting who's who is his backup. Um, then CJ Stroud, then Joe Burrow, and you can see him. Four dudes in a line. Almost. Well, it would. It would. It would. It would. It, would, it wouldn't be CJ Stroud. It would have been Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne Haskins. Then. And then Joe Burrow. Yeah. It was it was four three of them are starting three of them are starting quarterbacks in the NFL right now, or two of them. I don't. You, you'll have to. You, you know the video that I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert knows the video that I'm talking about. That's the video that I'm talking about. The question is: Is there a next step up mentality? That is the question. Brian Hartline, um, he went to Ohio State. This is his alma mater. He played. Uh, five six years as a wide receiver in the NFL before going into and staying at forever uh Ohio State so I don't we don't know what he's gonna look like this could be honestly it's between which one's gonna suck more Ohio State and Penn State unfortunately this is the way the Big Ten is until next year when UCLA and USC join I I think it's very important to notice that Ryan Day's offense is very quarterback friendly and I'm sure yep. Brian Hartline is going to have a similar offense but I knew if Ryan Day was taking over quarterback would not be an issue and Ohio State would be tops in my mind to beat Michigan already the problem is I don't know brand new quarterback and a new play caller they have to mesh immediately because Simeon right off the bat they're at Indiana. Yeah, that's it listen, it, it, it's a win at Indiana. Indiana I don't even remember what their record was last year. I think they're at the bottom of my table. They're they're not in the top they're not in the top yeah, eight. No, no. They were pretty bad. They were I pretty completely bad. forgot to put them on. That's okay. that's, that's how, how bad they were. That's how bad they were. Okay. Um so so in, so in at Indiana's win, then they get Youngstown State. Yeah. Say it. When Western Kentucky, I think they lost their quarterback. Did they not? Western Kentucky, I I think, but Western Kentucky is an air raid offense. Yeah, they that, eat the ball around. That they can put up some points. And Ohio State in September, their defense tends to take a while. I'm not saying upset by any means, but all yeah. I'm saying is Western Kentucky can put up support. Okay, Simeon, it gets tough. At Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame is going to be a big name for us. We need to break them down. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with a loss. Whoa! I'm going to actually play this like I have this in my head. Okay. And immediately, for those of you keeping track, that means they have two losses on the season. Okay. So, a loss at Notre Dame. Then they're home to Maryland. Win. At Purdue. Win. Uh, Home against Penn State. This is the question mark. I'm going to go with another loss here. Oh, my goodness. At Wisconsin. Win. Oh, wow. Okay. At Rutgers. Win. Home Michigan State. Win. Home Minnesota. Win. And at Michigan. The loss. So So, you have a 9-3 Ohio State squad. I I do for the sole purpose, and this is one of those things that's kind of like Cameron Rising in Utah, where the sole purpose is we have no idea what their quarterback. The quarterback is going to make or break this offense. Marvin Harrison Jr. is a number one overall pick, future Hall of Famer, if he can stay as productive and healthy as he's been. The dude is a beast. You can't double cover him. He mosses people. You have two great options at wide receiver. The question is, can they get open? Can you let them get open? Can you protect the quarterback enough time for it to get open? Can you run the ball enough to get him open? 
you can put up a million points on teams with those two guys. You can just you your defense can suck. Your defense can give up forty because you're going to put up sixty four. Like that's as good as this offense can be. It just depends who's the play caller. You know, I really do hate that you're better at this than I am. Like you're you're way better articulate, articulated, articulate. I don't know you're, than you, I am. It, you're it, good. It's amazing. Go you're good it, off the bounce. Once I get warmed up, I can I can get and this is totally me being just obnoxious, but I can get going if I need to. You, you can absolutely get going. Uh, so Penn State's next. Uh, Nittany Lions took third place in the Eastern Division last year, and third place, their only two losses came home against Ohio State and at Michigan, to where it was both close games into the second half, and in the case of the Ohio State game, late into the fourth quarter, before kind of things fell apart for them, and they lost by 18-plus points in both games. James Franklin always seems to mess things up for his squad, one way or another. Um... They, however, they aren't that far behind uh, Penn State. Quarterback Drew Aller is a rising star. He is monster. He reminds a lot of people of Josh Allen. Uh, they're hoping to get that passing game going a little bit. I'm not concerned about the passing game. I'm concerned about Penn State's trash offensive line either running the football or protecting the quarterback. And it's one or the other year in and year out. And sometimes it's the same year, and that just breeds terrible. Nicola, Nick Singleton and Katron Allen are probably the second best duo backfield we have outside of Michigan. Plenty of optimism along the offensive line. That just means that mm, they're not quite sure. Biggest question mark on offense is at uh, wide receiver. Kent State, they did transfer in Kent State Dante Cephas. Um... Despite losing quarterback Joey Porter Jr. and safety Jair Brown, the Nittany line should have a top defense. They do have Manny Diaz as a returning coordinator, and Manny Diaz is a semi-good uh, defense if coordinator. So, Simeon, here's the thing. Here's the big question mark with Penn State. Offensive line. To me, that's it. If they're, yeah. able, if they're able to run the football... They're going to have a pretty good team, and they're going to take yeah. pressure off Drew Aller. If they can't protect Drew Aller or run the football, they're in massive trouble. Yeah. And, I, I, God, he, 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 you said you said it 100% right. That's what I was going to say. If Drew Aller, I think, is good enough, for, especially from what we see, saw of him last year, that he's not he's going to be step up and ready to go. The question is, can he have enough pocket time in order to make the throws that he needs to make? Penn State always has a running back. It's the rule. Those are the rules. Yeah. You have running backs. Yeah, at you're Penn right. State. Yep. You have running backs and fat white boys to block for them. That's how it works. The question is, did they get the good fat white boys or not? Okay. Um, I don't and this know. This is what... with all due respect to fat white boys. <laughs> to fat white boys. <laughs> We don't know what it's going to look like. I think Manny Diaz is clearly a better defensive coordinator than he is um, head coach. Head coach for how good Joey Porter Jr. was. His defense was astounding last year. It was not his defense's fault at Penn State. James Franklin will somehow botch one or two games, yeah, probably. 100%. Um, no more than two, He's only, he's but he's good for at least two. So... Uh, Week one at West Virginia, guys, if you remember the Pac-12. They're home. They're home. It's it's a win. Sorry. They're home against West Virginia. It's a um, win. So, and remember what I said. If if West Virginia beats Penn State week one, I think West Virginia it wins uh, the Big 12. Anyway, then week, <laughs> week two, home against Delaware. Home against Delaware, the Blue Hens, only because they didn't want to be called the Blue Cox. Um, that's a win. Okay. Uh, week three at Illinois. Illinois is going to be an interesting team. Illinois is going to be an interesting team, but not interesting enough defensive-minded head coach for a loss at home uh, in Happy Valley at Beaver Stadium. Uh, well, they're in Champaign, Illinois, so you're just oh, getting they are wrong. At, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. No, you, you, oh, by you, the way, uh, West Virginia on NBC, uh, Delaware on Peacock. Yes. Uh, okay, Simeon, very interesting game. September 23rd, home against Iowa. Cade McNamara, every time he's been in that building, he's beat Penn State, and that was all of one time. But they got Cade McNamara for Michigan quarterback and Eric Hall. 
What do you got? So, so uh, th- what you're going to find is the theme of James Franklin somehow not going to drop two games. If James Franklin is going to drop two games, this is going to be one of them. Yeah. Um, however, I have him somehow fumbling into a good season with he doesn't drop two games, so that's a win wow. home against Iowa. All right, Northwestern. Oh, boy. Northwestern, I th- I – I honestly think this is the death of their football program with the hazing uh, swirling around. Eight players now have lawyers uh, at Northwestern. That's a win. Uh, Then they're home against UMass. Uh, Win. At Ohio State. Win. Did you have them beating Ohio State? I did have them beating Ohio State. Oh, okay. Home against Indiana. Win. At Maryland. Win. Win. Home against Michigan. I have them losing. Home against Rutgers. Win. Home against Michigan State. Win. Wow. So Penn State gets a massive boost from a guy on a podcast that no one ever listens to besides three people. And they go 11-1. And we love and you, one. They go 11-1. and one. Simeon, I, I, I will say this. I, I will say this. Yeah. I think Iowa could get them. And and yeah, you said 100. percent And I Ohio really State and I, could and, get them. And I think West Virginia could get them. Just West because Virgin- it's week Listen, one. It's week one. West Virginia could get them. They're not a bad football team. Iowa can get them. Ohio State can get them. Michigan State could somehow not suck this year and get them. Michigan State. Michigan State will get to them. They're going to have to turn around. One hunt. They're going to have to do a complete 180 because they did a complete 180 last year. I don't know what happened. They were an impressive football team in 2021, and then in 2022, they just they, it, it, they crapped the bed. It's that transfer portal mentality. Simeon, who's next on your it's, top down? It is Purdue. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, let's do Purdue. So Purdue's looking at – oh, they split it into divisions. I see. Okay. Yes. This website. So it's the okay, first so season Purdue, for everybody, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Ryan Walter was the head coach at, I have to remember, oh, he was the defensive coordinator at Illinois. Oh, dear Lord, they're screwed. Um, Graham Harrell looks like he was a backup to Aaron Rodgers. Oh, look at that. He went to Texas Tech. So probably a, let's see where he was. He was at West Virginia and USC before West Virginia, North Texas. So he's not a half bad coach, but still not going to be enough to get a random school in Indiana over the hump for sure. And then, of course, their defense coordinator also came from Illinois as well. It's the first season. I see good things coming from Purdue, but I don't see great things coming from Purdue. <laughs> that is fair. You pretty much covered it all. Graham Harold is in. Uh, they got big shoes to fill. It's going to be kind of hard to get back to them. So, Simeon, they are at home week one against Fresno State. You know, I think... If the coach does what's right, that's going to be a win for them and get them hype. Okay, then week two at Virginia Tech. Um, I just don't think Virginia Tech is any good. I think that's a 2-0 and start for Purdue. Okay. Uh, I'm going to clap Purdue real quick. Their yeah. out-of-conference schedule is solid because then week three, it's Syracuse. Yeah, and again, they did a really good job of getting names that you're like, oh, that should be a good name, a good game for them, for for Purdue. And then they'll go and beat the teams, but you forget that all these are like two and ten teams that they're playing. So it's three wins off the bat. I think they'll probably drop one to Fresno State, you okay. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. you know. They're, they'll perdone it. Um, they'll perdone it at some point. My sleeper team in the Big Ten, Wisconsin. I, 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 it's, they've been a sleeper team for since Michigan, the, since they put Michigan, Penn State, and Ohio State in the same division. They lose to Wisconsin. I have known nothing about this Illinois team, and it kind of concerns me. Okay, so Illinois. Um, you know, I'm gonna say let's take let's let's have them take a sl- let's let me just look here. Yeah, they're taking a slide. They're losing to Illinois. And then at Iowa? I think they're losing to Iowa. Yeah, I like that. Ohio State? Yeah, they're losing to Ohio State. At Nebraska? (laughs) They'd probably pick one up knowing Matt Rule here. But 
Uh, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it another loss. Okay, at Michigan, you gave them a loss. Uh, Minnesota home uh, loss. At Northwestern, uh, a win. Yeah. Okay, no, win. win and Indiana. Yeah. Uh, win. Okay. That's an in-state rivalry game. So, I think they're going to be better than Indiana. So how many do we got there? That They're going 4-8. Uh, 4-8 for with, with per a, don't. I think they're more of like a 5-7 and, uh, a five and seven team okay. this year. I, th- I think they brought in the right people. The issue is that that coach took all of his guys with him. That's so they had to replace everybody. It's a whole new culture. That's going to be hard. If anything, I have them backwards. They'll somehow start upsetting teams later in the year if they're going to win. Well, that's, that's a very how it goes, no, but, but that's a very Purdue thing to do. In October, once they get into October, facing top five opponents, very, very dangerous uh, team. So, uh, Simeon, who's next on your list? Uh, Illinois. So, Illinois, they were an eight-win season. That was the best since 2007. They hope to build off that momentum with Head coach Brett Bielema, a defense led the Big Ten in fewest points allowed in 12.8. They lost coordinator Ryan Walters to the aforementioned Purdue Boilermakers and a couple key defenders, including their first-round pick Davion Witherspoon. However, the front remains a strength with Keith Rudolph and Jerzon Newton returning. Uh, offense features to share question marks as well. Tommy DeVito and running back Chase Brown both left. They do have old Miss transfer Luke Altmeyer expected to start under center. So with the Illinois um, fighting Illini, favorite team of Kathy Norder, RIP. RIP. They open against Toledo. The, when do, when do, when do I have... Why do I have they do open? Why do I have Ohio State? What who did I just copy? Indiana. I did copy Indiana. Uh they do open against Toledo and that is a win. Okay, then they are at Kansas. I think we had them losing to Kansas. Yeah, and I, I agree I think, with them. I, I think we did as well. So lost to Kansas at uh home against Penn State. You have Penn State um, beating them. Home against Penn State. Now you have to remember two years ago, that Penn State Illinois yeah. game was nine oh noise. Yeah. Um Penn State. You 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 already did I already Penn State. have them losing to Penn State. Yeah, okay. yeah, sorry. Florida Atlantic. Florida Atlantic, uh they're winning that game. Okay. At Purdue. Uh don't I have them losing? Yeah, I, I have them losing that game. I'm oh, okay. sorry. I know I have them winning that game. You have I'm them sorry. winning that I, game. I, I'm trying to update my spreadsheet and play and you, make calls at the same time. You got it. I believe in Eli. Um, okay. Home against Nebraska. Home against Nebraska. I think they're going to win against Nebraska. At Maryland. Uh, they're going to beat Maryland. Okay. Home against Wisconsin. Uh, they're going to lose to Wisconsin. At Minnesota. Uh, they are going to... I, they're going to beat Minnesota. Uh, home against Indiana. Uh, they're going to beat Indiana. At Iowa. They're going to lose to Iowa. And then home against Northwestern. And they're going to beat Northwestern. So, I, have, I, I messed this up pretty badly. Okay. Uh, I d- didn't switch over a couple teams here. Uh, Kansas, Penn State, Florida Atlantic. Uh, at Purdue. Uh, win against Nebraska. Win against Maryland. Lose to Wisconsin. They're at Minnesota. I had them beating Minnesota, right? Uh, at Minnesota? I Sure, yeah. Then Indiana. I had them beating Indiana. Okay. I had them losing to Iowa. And beating Northwestern. And beating Northwestern. So what is that? Um... If all of my calculations are correct, that makes them a – I forget. Do I have them – I have them beating Illinois. That makes them a three-loss team. They pick up – they go nine and three. Oh, okay. Really? Only three losses. Okay. Yeah, and I mean – Because they the lose deal. to Kansas. They lose to Penn State. 
They lose Basically, to Basically, they lose to anybody who has an offense. They lose to Wisconsin. No, they have four losses because they lose to Iowa, Wisconsin, Kansas, yes, and, Penn and Penn State. So it's, yeah. they're eight and four. Now, so that, it's the exact same. The, the Minnesota game could be, could not be. Who knows? All not right. me. Who's next? I'm just your, a dude. Who's we're next? going to Iowa. 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 Oh boy. Boy, are they this going to be interesting. So transfer in Cade McNamara and transfer in Eric All to help a dismal, dismal. Don't forget the Seth offense. Anderson, who was a big Seth Conference Offensive Freshman of the Year yes. in 2022. Um, they only averaged 18 points last season. Offensive coordinator Brian Fant is on the hot seat in a rank or break season, obviously. However, this unit optimism, I told you about Cade McNamara. They it's not got just Brian France who's on the hot seat. I'm sorry, Brian France. Yes, uh, running back Caleb Johnson, rising star to watch as usual. Gonna have an awesome defense. Gonna have awesome special team. Jack Campbell, cornerback Riley Moss will be missed, but they have Cooper Jejean, who is a preseason All American, um, and of course Phil Parker, who is the special teams coordinator for Iowa. So, Simeon, Iowa. Why do I care about? Iowa special teams like I know why Be- I care about because them. they're awesome their punter is awesome every no. single year Utah State at home week one uh, that's a dub at Iowa State week dose uh, that's another dub Western Michigan week trace triple dub at Penn State that was a uh, loss. yeah loss okay home against Michigan State uh, w- uh win Home, Purdue. That's a win. Uh, that's a win, yeah. This might be for the West Division right here. October 14 at Wisconsin. Wisconsin Iowa's still going to Iowa. They're going to lose the game to Wisconsin. Okay. Home against Minnesota. I think they're going to beat Minnesota. I, I don't know anything about Minnesota this year. I'm excited. Okay. Uh, at Northwestern. Uh, yeah. Northwestern's not winning a single game this year. Hello. I'm just going to come out right now no, and say you're probably right. That. You're probably right. I don't know who they're on. Let's let's they're... just take a look real quick. We're going to pause pause. No, just real quick. In, F- finish out Iowa. the last three teams. Rutgers, Illinois, Nebraska. Uh win win win. So you have them losing to Penn State and to Wisconsin. So yeah. they are going 10 and 2. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. 100% 10 and 2. Um Okay, well, who do you want to look at next? Northwestern or? Let me just, let me just, so they play, they're at Rutgers. They're at Rutgers, loss. This is Northwestern. Okay. UTEMP, UTEMP. Maybe they somehow get that, that's at home, but let's assume loss. At Duke, probably a loss. Uh, Minnesota, loss. Penn State, loss. Howard, there you go. You can you can beat an Ivy League school. Um, there's a win for you. Okay, so I lied. At Nebraska, loss. Maryland, that could be a second win for them. Let's just say loss. Iowa, loss. Wisconsin, loss. Purdue, loss. Illinois, loss. They are winning one game, and don't be surprised if they lose to Howard. So, I no. Okay, so here's the deal. Simeon, to back you up a little bit, so of course we have the fallout with the head coach, and now the entire roster is basically transferring out. Yeah. Um, after playing in the Big Ten Championship game in 2020, Northwestern is 4-20 and since, including a one-win campaign last season. Now you basically... Um, Northwestern, Simeon, has mm-hmm. five 10-win seasons in its program. Four mm-hmm. of those, Pat Fitzgerald was either a player in the late 90s or a mm-hmm. coach for the other three. You take him out for off of a one-loss program, players transferring out... It will be a miracle to win three games. Now, to be fair, David Braun, their interim head coach, um, who's probably going to be their next head coach if he wants if he wants to coach here after this season, uh, North Dakota State alum. Okay, so he didn't play I mean, for them. He was a coach. Right. So those guys, and then Northern Iowa before that. That's two winning FCS teams. Now he is a defensive minded head coach, but. A potato is a potato, you know? You, you know who I'm really interested to see? And, and let's just go right to them. We're going to go out of order. 
Um, okay. Just, just really quick. Do you need to fill out your Northwestern thing? Uh, I'm doing that right now while okay. you're going to the next so, team. So, well, I'm going to tell you about, because you have mentioned this team multiple times that you know nothing about them, but are very interested to see them. We're going to jump ahead to the Golden Gophers. Golden uh, Gophers. Actually, they were next, so okay, no, we're not jumping ahead. Golden Gophers, Muhammad Ibrahim running back out. But they have a quarterback, Athen. Oh my goodness, it's a Greek name. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Um, he came in nice. last year. He played okay. The offense wasn't great. It's a loaded group of playmaker. This is all by Athlon Sports in a receiving yeah. court that should keep the offense performing at a high level, replacing three starters on the offensive line, including All American center John Michael Schmitz, is a top concern on. For the offense, Minnesota's defense held teams to 14 points a game last season. This unit will be tested with just five returning starters um, on and some turnover at each level. The crossover state it, slate is brutal. Michigan and at Ohio State. So, good, decent group. They're going to run the football. Sounds like they got loaded receiving corps defense gonna be always be solid under pj fleck simeon minnesota nebraska week one so they have two both coordinators are co-off co-offensive co-defensive both dude greg harbaugh jr related to the harbaugh's i don't think so um this is pj fleck's seventh season i don't know what his uh where did he come from Oh, he was just in Western was Michigan. Of, um, no, 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 I know where PJ Fleck came from. Oh. I want to know his over how he's been doing at Wisconsin. I Minnesota. mean, at Minnesota. There he is. They're basically the same state, just right next door to each other. And they would kill me if I did that. Aren't they on top uh, of okay, each other? Okay, so his best his best season was 2019 season, where he went 11 and two. Um, in the shortened 2020 season, he went three and four, um, and then he's been fl- he went nine and four the last two seasons. So. As far as Minnesota goes, they're probably pretty happy with him, but also pretty mediocre. But we know that PJ Fleck is a recruiter, so I don't know what their transfer looks, what their transfer guys looks like. He, you know, he's a hype man. It could happen. It could not happen. I have them losing a couple games that they probably should be winning if they're a bigger school. So let's start with it, Micaiah. So Nebraska, right off the bat, that Thursday. It takes place the same time Florida Utah, but but this is a sneaky good game on Fox. What do you got? Uh, it's a great game on Fox to watch the Golden Gophers beat the Cornhuskers. Okay, great. Week two, Eastern Michigan. Not a rivalry game, but kind of a rivalry game. Uh, win at North Carolina. Do you remember what we had them doing? I, I, when we did I think the ACC? I had North Carolina beating them because it's at uh, North Carolina. I, I think that's fair. That's their first challenge. It's going to be hot. It's going to be North Carolina. Yeah, that's that's a loss. At Northwestern's a win. Home against Louisiana. Uh, win. Okay. That's not Louisiana State. That's Louisiana. Home against Michigan. That's a loss. Yep. At Iowa, that was a loss. Yeah. Home against Michigan State. This one's a question for me because I haven't seen Michigan State's schedule yet, but I'm going to say they're going to pick up a win against Michigan State. Okay. Illinois. Uh, I forget what I had them doing. I had them losing to Illinois. Okay. At Purdue. I forget what I had them doing at Purdue. I had them, I think, yeah, losing to Purdue. Wow, losing to Purdue. At Ohio State. No, I had them winning. You had them winning to Purdue at Ohio State. They're going to lose to Ohio State. And at, and home against Wisconsin. Uh, I think they're going to lose to Wisconsin. So I, I think that's 7-5, and five, right? Um, Ohio State, Wisconsin are both. I have four. Who did I have them? Oh, Iowa. They lose to Iowa. That's right. Yeah, 7-5. Seven 7-5. And five. Seven and five for oh, wait. The... And, and Michigan. Nope. 6-6. Six 6-6. And, six and six. Six and six. Wow, P.J. Fleck taking a step back after two nine-win seasons. I forgot he was a nine-win season type guy. And, and you know, they could flip the one against Iowa. They could flip the one against Illinois. And then all of a sudden, you know, he's – it is. I just – it's a make-or-break season. If he goes six and six, he's clearly he's clearly lined up. If he goes six and six, sayonara, he's out as the, Michigan, as the Minnesota head coach. 
If he goes 9-7 and seven again, he'll probably get another year. He, if he flips Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa, which are not North Carolina, he's looking at a two-loss season to Ohio State and Michigan, and all of a sudden, that looks pretty good. It, Even a three-loss season would look pretty good at this point, losing to Wisconsin. It looks amazing. It's, not, it's yeah. not like North Carolina's a powerhouse. I'm sorry. Uh, well, not – yeah. No, you're absolutely right. So, okay, Simeon, who's next now that we're kind of back on track here? You're good. Maryland is next. Maryland. Okay, Maryland took a lot of people by uh, surprise last year just with how good – excuse me, their offense was. They do return that quarterback of that high-powered offense. Brother oh. of Tua Tagovailoa. Talia Tungavaloa returns oh, with 3,000 passing yards and 18 TDs. However, he was kind of benched in games for kind of being too much of a gunslinger. Roman Hem- Hemby is also back at running back. Solid group of weapons should help Mike Sloxley and first-year offensive coordinator in Josh Gaddis. Um... Mike Selassie has to rebuild the offensive line, returning just one starter. That's a big concern for me. Continue to generate improvement on defense. Terrapins allowed five yards per play last season. Defensive coordinator Brian Williams needs a couple of transfers to actually pop to make this go. Quarter, the secondary also lost quarterback uh, Jacorian Bennett and Dante Brooks. So... That you forgot to mention their co-offensive coordinator is Kevin Sumlin. No, shut up. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I kind of I haven't heard that ex the co- t- uh, head coach of Texas A and M, ladies and gentlemen. Ex, for those of you that head, don't know, head coach of Texas A and M, uh, he was the co-OC to the 0607 Oklahoma, which I don't know who that would be under. Um, head coach of Houston A and M, Arizona, and previously in 2020 to the Houston Gamblers of the USFL. So, coach. Simeon, Maryland starting off with one <sighs> right in the same state at Towson. Uh, that's a win. Okay. I, I kind of feel bad because, like, this Maryland team, my two cents here, There, it's a win against Towson. Week two is Charlotte. at home against Charlotte. Week three, I believe that's a rivalry game, West Virginia. Uh, Virginia. Is a win. Okay, so they're starting three and zero. Yeah, they're starting three and zero, and I'm not sure how I feel about Michigan State yet. I, yeah, I'm gonna get to Michigan State next because you're kind of uh, pooping on them a little bit, which is granted because they haven't shown us anything in the last eighteen months that would say they shouldn't be pooped on a little bit. So, and, and quite frankly, they didn't do anything in the off season. So I think th- it's very possible they're starting off four. They have a good enough offense, but it's very possible Virginia, Michigan state have an issue. Josh Gaddis, Kevin Sumlin, the right people you want in at the right time because you need another quarterback to come in. So Simeon also don't forget Charlotte's a good team conference USA. I think they may have moved now to the Sun Belt. Charlotte is a solid team, um, but at Michigan State, win or loss there. What do you got? I'm going to do the win. Okay, you're going to do a win. 4-0, Indiana at home. <sighs> Shoot. That's a win. Okay, at Ohio oh, no. State. Here we go. I think the rest of these, besides Northwestern, I think uh, I had them losing to Ohio State. Yeah, Illinois. I think I had them losing I'm trying to find yeah I had them losing to Illinois at Northwestern that's a win win yeah Penn State, Penn State loss w- loss at Nebraska. Nebraska is Matt Rule getting this thing going late in the year or I, not I, I I don't think so okay think so, so win year. loss at, win yeah. at Nebraska Michigan yeah. loss at Rutgers loss. uh I think what's his face is going to be out of a job loss at Rutgers I mean, win at Rutgers. So nine and three um, losses to Ohio State, Penn State, and Michigan. That's what you have. Losses to Ohio oh, State, I- Illinois. Illinois. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Illinois. Uh, sorry, Illinois. I keep forgetting about I, you. I think they move up next year. I think it's what they need to do in order to move on, so and got- for the coach, whoever it is, not to lose their job. I think Josh Gaddis and Kevin Sumlin are the exact exactly what you need. Listen, we went and watched the game. To twenty twenty one was that. Yeah. In Maryland? Yeah. They got slaughtered. They got slaughtered. 
but they uh, they they looked like they had fundamentals. So if they can stick to the fundamentals, if they can improve from where they were, DJ Uyalungale is who they need at the t- at the right. He's better than his brother, in my opinion, as a quarterback. Who are you he's talking not- about? Talia Tag- Tagovailoa? Uh, no, sorry, no, I'm sorry. I was thinking, isn't there's too many. There's guys. This is gonna sound super there's, racist. There's too many, there's too many Hawaiians to keep <laughs> to keep track of. Okay, uh, let's just drop that there. <laughs> Said no one ever. <laughs> Said no one ever. Michigan State, Michigan State, <sighs> abysmal in 2022 after a great 2021 campaign. Uh, their 23 season grew more uncertain. Starting quarterback Peyton Thorne and wide receiver Key Keenan Coleman out after spring practice both transferred development of promising junior signal caller Noah Kim could hold the key to Spartan season they only averaged 20 points last year in Big Ten play improvement in the trenches and secondary in my personal opinion is a must influx of transfers boosts the defensive front after Michigan State ranked 12th in rush defense however the secondary is a concern once again and coordinator scotty hazelton has work to do to improve a unit that surrendered over 30 points a game in conference simeon secondary not very good questions at quarterback questions at running back lots of transfers in that's how they were good in 2021 because they got a lot of transfers in mainly kenneth walker Simeon, Michigan State, Week One, Central Michigan. Uh, it's a win. Central Michigan sucks. Uh, they have three currently on the roster, and they probably have more. But they have three quarterbacks, two of which are redshirt juniors, and their names are Andrew and Noah. So you know they're not good. Um, Stop it. <laughs> The last... That's your clip right there. <laughs> Taking shots at all the Andrews and Noah's out there. Like, no, you're not wrong. Like, what, name, you, like what are you a... expecting? To, what are you expecting to do here? They're What's not he going to a... do part the Red Sea and call his animals over. Uh, I guess you know. Is Andrew going to impart Andrew luck? Is he going to be blessed by the do by the flip phone man himself? So is so, is Andrew or Noah? Are they winning uh, a home against <sighs> Richmond week two? Yes, they're going to win home against Richmond. Okay, week home against Washington week three. They're going to lose to Washington yeah, yeah, yeah. week three. Okay, Maryland home. What did you just say they were going to do? They were going to lose to Maryland. Yes, that is correct. At Iowa. They're going to lose to Iowa. At Rutgers. They're going to lose. They're going to beat Rutgers. Okay, good, good, good. At Michigan, that's a loss already. You said. Uh yeah, correct. Sorry, I'm trying to. That's fine. Trying to keep. Uh, up I'm trying here. to go slow enough. At Minnesota, I think you said that was a. Win? That's a dub, for them. I mean, a, a loss. That's it's a, a dub loss. for Minnesota. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Nebraska home. I uh, haven't done Nebraska yet. I think Matt Rule's gonna get it. Listen, the only way Matt Rule's good is when he plays other teams who are somehow worse from a culture perspective than he is. At first, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, he, he can turn around and maybe he's going to change his stripes. I'm not going to hate against Matt Rule. I hope him all the best at Nebraska, but he's going to beat them, you know, on, on November 4th. Okay, so Matt Rule's going to beat Michigan State. Correct. Okay, um, Nebraska, by the way, Matt Rule for bad culture programs um, typically takes about a year. Like Baylor, yep. he was not very good first year. At Ohio yeah. State, that's a loss you already said. Yep. At Indiana. I think that's going to be a win. Okay. And then finally finish it out with Penn State. You already gave them a loss. So you have them losing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games. Wow. Hopefully we didn't just lose you. You still there? Yeah, uh, but uh, oh, and that, and now we're back. It it cut out our recording, and then came us back. Am I still here? You, I'm assuming uh, you can't, can't see me. I can't see you. That doesn't mean you're not there, though. Well, that's always fun. I guess Let, it's a a video podcast for people. Yeah, um, it's a audio podcast. Let's just c- continue right along. Um, 
with um and you know what why don't we do nebraska okay okay uh nebraska matt rule in you said debut at baylor's and uh hit in his season and this is what i was talking about simian in his season yeah. debuts at baylor and temple he went a combined three and 21 so not great yeah Second seasons is really where he kind of popped off. Nebraska is far from a finished product in his first year, but they're a lot closer than Baylor and Temple were in his first year. Um, Debut, hopefully it goes a little better for him is what the article is saying. Okay, Georgia Tech transfer Jeff Sims is expected to start at quarterback after Casey Thompson transferred to FAU and the Skill talent is solid with running back Anthony Grant returning and Billy Kemp the fourth and Eric Gilbert all arriving both from Virginia and Georgia respectively. Um, the development of the offensive line and defense which surrendered 28 points a game last season is a must. So Nebraska. Matt Rule tends to have shaky first seasons and then turns it on late and from what I'm getting they're they probably have six losses right now at, from what I can remember. So they're at Minnesota. You gave them a loss. Is that correct? Uh, Yes. Okay. And then they're at Colorado. I think you had them losing this game, didn't you? Yes. I did. Yeah. I, I don't think Col- – You tell me, though. Th- this is your show. <sighs> this is you. I go. I'm going. You start have. You've broken me down enough. I love it for for. Um, I'm just going to turn off my cam here, so you don't have to. Oh, of course I can't. Um, <laughs> let Let's say since it's me and you haven't broken me down, uh, they're going to beat Colorado. Okay. I mean, they're going to. Uh, they're going to. They're going to lose to Colorado. They're going to lose to Colorado. Okay, great. So they're starting zero and two. Not great. Northern Illinois and Louisiana Tech. Uh, they're going to win against those two. Okay, so they're 2-2. Two and two, Then they go to face Michigan, and that's a loss. Yeah. At Illinois? Uh, I think they're going to beat Illinois. You sure about that? Did you check your thing? Oh, Illinois, not Indiana. They're going to lose to Indiana. No, we're talking about Illinois still. You know what I mean. <laughs> okay. okay, I don't. The fighting the... Illini, they're going to lose to the orange and, and 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 blue people. Okay, orange and blue people. They're going to beat Northwestern then, yes? Yes, of course. You Purdue. don't have to check on me on that one. All right, Purdue. I, th- I forget in Purdue, and I'm trying to do 15 things at once. I should really just go back. I have them loot beating Purdue. You have them beating Purdue. At Michigan State, you have them winning. Okay. Maryland. I think I have them losing to Maryland. Okay. At Wisconsin. Yes, I do have them losing to uh, Maryland. They're going to lose to Wisconsin. There's no and finally, Iowa, I believe you have them losing. Yes. Okay. So how many losses is that? Count them up and let me know. I think it's easier to count the wins because, honestly, I was trying to just copy and paste at the same time. Uh, lost to Minnesota, win against Colorado, win against Northern Illinois, Louisiana Tech, uh, beat they Purdue, won. beat Northwestern, and I think that's it. That's four four wins. Four and eight. Okay. Yeah. Four Which and eight. Which is about Matt uh, Matt Rule special. Four and eight. You gave up. Um, you gave up a coach who also went four and eight for another coach going four and eight in his first year. Simeon, we are flying right along here. We are just over an hour. This is what happens when you let a professional host. L O L. We did Northwestern already. Okay, Simeon. What we're gonna do is we've done Illinois. We've done Iowa. Correct. Yes. Yes. We're gonna finish off the West Division. With, I think, my sleeper for the Big Ten and maybe the college football playoff. Yeah. It's a new era in Madison. It is. Under Luke Fickle. Bucky has a new coach and a new offensive coordinator. Uh, They have one of the top ten. They had a top-ranked defense last year in the Big Ten. That's only going to continue. Uh, they have eight returning so- starters. Phil Longo arrives from North Carolina to implement his version of the air raid attack, which is a power run game with over-the-top uh, passing. 
Uh, so it's a shift in philosophy, though, that can worry some people, including myself at first. Braylon Allen is back at running back. The ground game isn't going to be an- ignored by Longo. Also, SMU transfer Tanner Mordecai coming in from SMU, as I already said, to help implement Phil Longo. Badger, uh, The Badgers catch both Iowa and Ohio State at home and miss Michigan in Penn State in crossover play this year. I I, love the mix of a good defensive team getting a better coach and an awesome offensive coordinator. Yeah, I forgot. They they lost. I thought they had the guy coming in from Florida. They lost it. Tanner Mordecai from SMU. That's a good – he's a graduate transfer. I'm sure he'll win. Um, They also have freshman Nick – Evers coming in from Oklahoma. He was wow. he was a uh, Lincoln Riley dude. All right, uh, C.J. Williams is coming in from USC. Okay, all right. Didn't he show up? Didn't he show? No, I'm. I get Mario Williams. I get him yeah, confused yeah, all the time. Yeah, Mario. Um, yeah, I think, and I, it sucks that we had technical difficulties for this episode. I think Wisconsin is gonna be one of those teams that's gonna again gonna do a Wisconsin thing. They're they're gonna drop a few games, but they're honestly this year their um their schedule favors them. They had the right pieces come in at the right time. You also remember they have Mike Tressel, uh ex uh Michigan State head coach, I believe. No, Michigan State linebacker coach. Okay. It was there's another Trestle. Who am I thinking of? You are thinking of I believe his also name is Mike Trestle. He was the head coach at Ohio State. That's what I was thinking. That's who. That's who I was. Yeah, except I thought he was at Penn State. All right, cool. No, that was an Italian dude. Okay. Um, all right. So yeah, they're they're really favored. I'm looking at their non-conference game. Who is their third non-conference game? It, it goes bu- home against Buffalo. Win or loss. Let's just start here. Uh, win. Okay. At Washington. I don't remember if we had them losing. I feel like we did. That's going to be a we, great game week I two. think it's going to be an awesome game, and I think I actually had Washington losing because I had Washington uh, I, going 10-2 and two, but only one loss in I conference. I think it's a 3-0 and start. Make okay. it a 4-0 and start. At Purdue. Okay, so they're five starting. 5-0 and start. 5-0 <laughs> and start Rutgers. Iowa, this is the game. Who did you have winning? I think I had Iowa beating them. Did I, I not? I don't think so. I think you should look that up. Uh, Iowa against Wisconsin. I had them losing, so six and zero start. Six and zero start at Illinois. Uh, seven and zero start. I am ninety seven percent sure. I think you're right. Home against Ohio State. I think I had Ohio State beating them. I'm just going to double check here real quick. OSU Wisconsin. I did. So they lose to Ohio State. Okay, at Indiana. They beat Indiana. Northwestern loss or win. That's what I meant. Yeah. Nebraska, you have that being win. a win at yeah. Minnesota. What'd you have? Um, and I think, uh, yeah, dropping the Minnesota drops Wisconsin. So yeah, it's it's a win. Ladies and gentlemen, eleven and one Wisconsin. And if I may, good sir, when I look at that schedule, I see eleven and one as well. My expectations of Wisconsin are through the roof this year. I agree with you. 100%. All right, let's go back east just real quickly. And these should go fairly quickly because we've done uh, most everyone else. We've done Michigan State, Rutgers, Scarlet Knight, Greg Ciano, Greg Schiano. They're still looking for their first winning season um, since he returned to the sideline in 2020. Luring play caller, Kirk. I don't even know how you say that. Cunt is coming back to Rutgers, was a good step forward in Rutgers' offense, but they only managed 17.5 points a game last season. His biggest challenge is to develop quarterback Gavin Wilmsat and a passing game that connected on just 48% of their passes in Big Ten last year. That's abysmal, ladies and mm-hmm. gentlemen. Mm-hmm. A couple of transfers will alleviate some concerns at wide receiver. They do have a running back returning, three running back uh, returning, actually. Shiano has a few holes to plug in the secondary, but a defense has a chance to improve with re- with seven starters returning, including lineman Aaron Lewis and Wesley Bailey. So he- here's what I'm seeing from this Kirk guy. He was uh, Joe Flacco's 
quarterback coaching Jufli college. You. Jufli Iku. Um, he went to Temple. Um, I don't know if he played for Temple. He was a graduate assistant for Temple. Um, so, 2012, he was at he was at Del. So, 2002 to 2007, he was at Delaware. 2008 to 2010, he was at Rutgers. One year at Richmond, back to Delaware as an RB coach. Uh, then Western Michigan and Minnesota with PJ Fleck until 19. Um, then Penn State. West Virginia, Minnesota the last three years, and now he's back at Rutgers. Micaiah, if you saw that on a resume, would you hire that person? Absolutely not. That's too much bouncing around. What are you doing? However, he had huge success with Minnesota in both stops. What this tells me is he's had success when he's had a good quarterback. Yeah, or, or a solid quarterback. So development, really not much of his thing. So they're going to start off with a W against Northwestern. What about Temple? And they're going to they're gonna beat Temple. They're going to beat Temple. Virginia Tech. I forget if we had them losing. or be, I think they're going to drop Virginia Tech. Okay, they drop Virginia Tech. So they are 2 and 1. Are you caught up? They're 2 and 2, actually, because they're dropping to Michigan as Michigan. well. Michigan. Wagner? Uh, dubs. Three and two. Then at Wisconsin, so they're three and three. Uh, are you keeping up on your spreadsheet? Uh, I'm going as fast as I can. I think I can figure it out, though. Yep, keep going. Wisconsin, Mich- Michigan State. Michigan State is what? Uh, What do they have them at? MSU is winning, they're, so they're losing. So they are losing at Indiana. Uh, I really don't think Indiana's going to be. I think they'll pull out a win on that one. Okay, pull out a win. Ohio State's an L. Yep. Iowa's an L. Yep. Penn State's an L. Yep. And I think Maryland, double check real quick. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's an L. It's also an L. It's an L. So they are going uno, dos, tres. Are they only a three-win team this year? I think they're a three-win team this year. You got three wins for Rutgers. And he's and he's out on his butt again. I don't. I don't I, see. Yeah. I mean. I mean. He hasn't had a winning season. I and... think Rutgers just wanted a a coach that they knew. And like, I wouldn't be surprised if he's not out on his butt. I really don't think they care about football at this point. I think they're out of the, they're out of their league. They went Big East to ACC. They were out of their league in ACC. Yeah. It's it's hard where you're competing for people with Penn State. Like, Penn State can so... just come and cherry pick your kids. So, uh, speaking of another coach that might be on the hot seat and might be out on his seat, Tom Allen at Indiana yeah, had a great, for Indiana, two-year stretch. He went 14-7. and seven. However, it should be noted, one of those years was the COVID year, which I implore everyone just to throw out. And like, I'm not talking throwing out Clemson and Ohio State and, and, and Alabama. Don't throw out the top team. But all the surprise teams, the Northwesterns, the Indianas, the Michigans, um, if they had a shockingly good or shockingly bad season, maybe it was just because COVID and just messed up everything. There is pressure building inside the, inside Indiana after going 6-18 and 18 over the last two seasons. Hefty Hall of Transfers will be counted upon right away. Shocker there. Including quarterback Tavion Jackson transferring from Tennessee, running back Christian Turner transferring from Wake Forest, and a handful of defenders to help a unit that allowed 34 points a game last fall. Returns just two starters. This is getting worse and worse. I should just stop reading. Oh, just wait. Receiver Cam Camper and running back Jalen Lucas give play callers Walt Bell a couple of promising playmakers to build around. Yeah, except you know who Walt Bell is? Uh, I don't know who Walt I'm Bell is. I'm going to give no. you his head coaching record. He's head coached exactly one team for three okay. years. Okay. 19 to 21. Uh-huh. His head. You have to guess who it is. Okay, and it's not UConn. Two and 23. UMass? Yes. Oh, I am so good. All right. So um, that's who you brought in as your quarterback coach yikes. and offensive coordinator. Awesome. Tom Allen is trying to get fired. All right. So, Simeon, they'll be lucky if they beat the Water Boys this year. I've never seen that movie. Is that good or no? 
I've never seen it either. I was okay. just trying to think of someone who well, you, well, you, you did should win very well. Okay, so this might be another team where it's just easier to count wins. Are you ready? Because you got to work fast with your fingers. Uh, my computer decided to f- completely freeze. Can you still hear me? I can still hear you. I'll can count you with me? my fingers. Go, Ohio oh. State. That's a loss. Indiana, Indiana State. That's a win. Louisville. I'm pretty sure that's a loss. Akron. Uh, that's a win. It's the Zips. At Maryland. A loss. At Michigan. The uh, lo- l- l- loss, sorry. Yeah, duh. Uh, Rutgers. I'm pretty think, sure that, that yeah, was a loss. loss. Penn State. Loss. Wisconsin. Loss. Illinois. At lo- Illinois. Loss. Michigan State. Uh, loss. And at Purdue. I think uh, loss. So what is that? Two wins? Yeah. Uh, they're, they're the Indiana State and Akron. They have some of the coolest uniforms possible. Now, to be fair, they get Louisville and Indianapolis. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> it's the but, only like, time they're going to visit Indianapolis. It's the only time when Tom Allen's the head coach. Guys, if you wanted to take football serious, you don't hire Walt Bell as your offensive coordinator. Too bad that what that was won't the, get. What was the high school that coach's that name? Any clicks anywhere outside of Connecticut because that would be an awesome, an awesome title. Actually, don't it's, hire if you care about football. Don't hire Walt Bell. Um, who was the head coach of Elizabethtown High School football when you were in high school? Oh my goodness, I don't know, but his son was the quarterback, so I knew nepotism was just. <laughs> Overflowing it would be like hiring him as the offensive coordinator. The dude had somehow had a better record than Walt Bell, but if you put it in comparison, the dude wouldn't have won a single game at the college level. A yeah. single game. So, so okay. So, Simeon, let me ask you this. I'm going to run down a team. Yeah. I need yes or no answers Yeah. for this question. Yeah. Are the yes or no are the following teams looking for a new head coach at the end of the season? You ready? Yeah, I am. Illinois, Brett Bielema. Uh, no. Okay. Tom Allen, Indiana. Yes. Kurt Ferentz, Iowa. Yes. No. Okay. Shoot. They, he's they, gonna get bailed out by Cade McNamara. He's and... gonna get bailed. <laughs> That's Robert's thing. He's gonna get bailed out by Cade McNamara. Uh, uh, Mike Loxley at Maryland. Uh, I think he's going to get built out by his coordinators. No. Oh, wait. Did we even do Maryland? We didn't do Maryland yet. Yeah, we did. Oh, they, they get eight and four. Okay. They, yes, we did. Uh, Jim Harbaugh at Michigan? <laughs> no. He'll be bronzed outside of the stadium after this year if he, they do, if he does what Quick I say thing. they do. Quick thing. Yeah. Is he leaving for the NFL? I don't think so. Okay. All right. All right. I, I think this year, I think he should. If he wanted to leave, he should have left this year. Okay. Uh, to be frank, he should have left for the Minnesota Viking job last year if he yeah. wanted to leave. Yeah, the Vikings didn't want him, but yeah, I see what you're saying. But yeah, I think at this point, if he, especially if he can f- finally get over the hump and win a natty. Or at least he, make the natty. Or at least make the natty. He basically has all the recruits that he would ever want. Yeah. And he knows that he can develop a quarterback. I, I knew he was serious about... Michigan football when he made the tough decision to start J.J. McCarthy last year over Cade McNamara. Yeah, I agree he, with you. He basically went to Cade McNamara and said, I know you literally just won us the Big Ten title game, but that's all you're going to do, and I got to replace you with J.J. McCarthy. And it's one of those things, like, as a boss, it just happens. You have you end up having to do it. I forget what point I was about to make. Oh, like an employee – if the NFL comes knocking, he's not going to say, nah, right? So, of course, the NFL is going to be like the Minnesota Vikings or who's going to who's gonna lose their head coach this year. The Houston Texans are going to be – are going to go, oh, yeah, we're, we're asking Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh is interested in the job when he's not. They just asked his agent to give him a deal, you know, which is basically 50% of the team. If, if you want to coach at Houston, you want equity in the team. That's the only way you want to coach at Houston. Houston sucks. Mi- Michigan State Mel Tucker. <laughs> Just <laughs> Oh, he's out of a job for okay, sure. Okay, so that's the title of the podcast. Houston sucks. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the Big Houston, Ten. Yeah, Houston Texans suck. Okay, so Mel Tucker and that huge contract out. Uh, Minnesota, P- P- 
P.J. Fleck, yeah. Minnesota. I think they're going to give him another year. Okay. That, no, that's fair, especially after 9-4, and four, two 6-6 six and six campaigns. That's yeah. fine. Again, I think a lot of this is determined because we're going to 12 teams next, next year. Yeah. If, if you have it like a Ryan Day, you have them losing three games. Yeah. I think in normal years, he's lost two straight. This would be third straight year to Michigan. Just, again, yeah. on paper, what we're saying or our predictions. He's 9-3. and three. I think there would be serious considerations in a regular year for him to be fired. Right? Um, but with him going to 12 teams, they're almost guaranteed a playoff berth every single year because he's probably only going to have two losses. Yes, but Ohio State doesn't want someone who loses to Michigan. That Again, that is Ohio, true. The only people that hate more than Michigan hates Ohio State is the hatred Ohio State has for Michigan. Yeah. Now, to and be fair, they're so pompous about it, too. It's very passive-aggressive. It's so hatred. pompous. I hate it. You wouldn't know they actually hate you, but they would burn down Detroit if they were able to. 100%. Columbus- Ohio State wants, Mi- wants Michigan to fall into Lake Erie. And it's not even close to Lake Erie. Actually, it technically is, but it's like the right point on the border, is, yeah. And there's Lake Michigan. I was literally saying they don't even want it to fall into the lake named after it. They hate Michigan, even though Ohio is subjectively, subjectively is the f- for sure one, right? Uh, yes, is subjectively a worse state than Michigan is. <laughs> Like, we've been through Ohio. We've driven through it how many times? It sucks. <laughs> I've been to Detroit. I've been, you know, Detroit around doesn't Michigan. Detroit suck? Detroit sucks. The rest of Michigan and the suburbs around Detroit don't suck. The rest of Michigan, eh. Ohio subjectively <laughs> sucks. Oh, I. Matt- Matt Rule. <laughs> people people like to... You know, he's going to keep his job. People like to hate on Iowa for being sucky and flat in Kansas. Ohio is worse than both of those states. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right, Northwestern's going to be looking for a new coach regardless. Ohio State and Ryan Day. Dude, okay, so Ohio State and Ryan Day. I want to say two shocking hot takes back-to-back here. Okay. Northwestern will not have a football program at the end of the year. I, that's not a hot take. I've been saying that now for like two weeks. Yeah, but Go you've been... follow us on Instagram, at 4th One Podcast. Please, everyone, because I'm dropping knowledge and, for you. And if they, don't have the, if they don't have a football program, they'll be leaving the Big Ten. Uh, they're going to save a gaggle of money, though, not building that new stadium, though. Um, so, right, what, what's your other shocking take? So, first and that's is only football leaving the Big Ten. The rest of their sports are actually pretty good. Um, Ryan Day is going to get fired at the end oh of the year. Oh, my goodness. Shut up. There's no way. It depends who comes available. Um, wait, time out. I could see. This is what I could see. Yeah. They go nine and three, whatever, ten and two, eleven and one, but they drop another year, another game to Michigan, right? Yeah, because that's really the scenario we're talking about. Yeah. If they if they go ten and two but meet Michigan, no one cares in the state of Ohio because uh, for their pompous. I have them. Dr- yeah, I have them dropping three games, but right. yeah, yeah, three games. I'm, I'm just saying in general, even if you're wrong and they beat Michigan, right? They go ten and two, but they beat Michigan. Nine and three, but they beat Michigan. NFL comes knocking. I am taking that job immediately. Mutually agrees to part ways. I don't think that they you can outright fire Ryan Day, but I think you can be like, you know what, Ryan? Sure, you can. No, I no, I I think it's you know what, Ryan. You know that NFL team that just called Arizona or who you know who whoever young quarterback. Why don't you go take that job and see what the NFL does for you? I I yeah. Uh, yeah, I, okay. I I I don't. I mean, I'm looking at at teams, you know, like if UTSA coach somehow becomes available, I could see them doing something splashy like that. They just Ohio State, Michigan can put up with losing to Ohio State a few years. Like you get five years. Of I mean, losing they did for Ohio fourteen State. straight. So yeah. I would hope so. Ohio State hates losing to the maze, and. If you go three years, you drop it three years, you're immediately on the hot seat. By the way, if you drop to Notre Dame and Penn State as well, mm-hmm. 
you're not in the playoff this year. Yeah, no. For sure. Well, with with one loss, you might not be in the playoff. And with and without, yeah. And if you drop two, which I think they're going to, dep- again, depending on their quarterback, there goes all of your good recruits. The reason that they had such good recruits is for how successful they were and their coaches successful in developing people into the NFL. Now, you're still going to get wide receivers for five years because Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to bail you out just like Kate McNamara is going to bail out what's-his-face over at Iowa. But my point is still proven when Iowa State expects uh, Iowa State, Ohio State, Iowa State expects nothing. They, they're they yeah, lucky if they get a good corn Iowa crop. Iowa State's just happy to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. just happy to – Matt Campbell didn't leave when he did. Um, Ohio State expects perfection. They're like Alabama at this point. Yeah. No, I, I – and, and I would agree. Um, I just don't think they'll fire. I think that they'll tell him to go look for an NFL job or another job elsewhere. Okay, James Franklin, Penn State. <laughs> No, I don't okay. think so, even though he should have been three years uh, ago. Purdue's head coach is in the first year, so I don't think they're... Uh, Shiano at Rutgers? Yeah, for okay, sure. Okay, for sure. And Luke Fickle is in his first year, going 11-1 and one or so yeah. we have him. All right, no. so the Big Ten's going to be replacing three, four coaches. Yeah, and don't Dep- be surprised if UCLA goes, no, thank you, and depending on how they do. I mean, we have them winning, losing three games, I think. Four or games, four? eight and four. Yeah. No, for, no, for sure. It, it's it's very much. I, I mean, I mean, UCLA could be coming in because Chip Kelly could be like, you know what? I'm just not into this anymore. Especially inside of a program, UCLA, that doesn't care all that much about football, and it's yeah. not necessarily the administration, but it's also the fans. Yeah. Like what? Like when Ohio State, Michigan go and play in the Rose Bowl against UCLA, it's going to be eighty percent Michigan fans. Name name the last famous UCLA football player. Um, not in the last two years. I don't even know who in the last two Dorian years. Dorian Thompson famous. Robinson. I mean, he was electric. Oh, but, DTR. Yeah, yeah, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, their basketball team hasn't been good since the sixties. Like. I, I'm agreeing with you, basically, yeah. is all that I'm saying. I don't, I, I mean, I don't know. And I also don't know how this is going to turn out from a technical perspective. We're going to have fun. Clips are basically out the window at this point, but you never know. We'll figure it out. This has been the Fourth and One Podcast. Wash your hands, you felt the animals. Peace hey, out. there it is. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>